Story time and wine. <laughs> gonna be a story time and wine type of day. I, I needed to bring back my wine Wednesdays and so you know what I saw this concept somewhere on YouTube I can't remember where it was just like wine down and so I decided I'm gonna do my little versions of wine dying so today I'm drinking a Pinot Noir which I will tell you more about and we're gonna talk about my car getting stolen now before we get into the video I do want to do a little disclaimer I want to let you all know that I've been filming all day and I have irritated my eyes to no end I've been wiping and applying makeup and wiping and applying makeup all day and so if they seem a little red and foggy it's because they're irritated if they're irritated because I've been applying a lot of makeup so I do want to apologize to you in, in advance I also want to apologize to you all because my dogs are running around and if you hear like little taps on the floor that's them if you hear them just ignore it just ignore it anyway the wine that I'm drinking today is a Pinot Noir let's have a little chit chat about this fellow so the Pinot Noir that I'm drinking is a 2015 Pinot Noir from Sonoma County and it is produced by wine producer Smart and Ray. Now I originally got this wine because I thought it was from the Sonoma Coast and for those of you that know a little bit of wa about wine, you know that the Sonoma Coast is known for their brighter, lighter, more florally Pinot Noirs so I thought that's what I was getting. Unfortunately, after looking a little closer at the bottle, I did discover that the wine was from Sonoma County instead of the Sonoma Coast, and the grapes are chosen from various vineyards throughout the Russian River Valley. Generally, Russian River Valley Pinot Noirs have a bigger, darker, more spicier flavor profile, and that's exactly what you're getting from this particular wine. Now, you're getting dark cherry, elderberries, acidity, but you're getting more spicy cola, earthy undertones, and because the wine is aged in French oak barrels for about one to two years, you're getting hints of creamy vanilla, toffee, and then a little bit of that oak flavor. Now, this particular Pinot Noir is about 13.8% alcohol. This pairs very well with salmon. This even pairs way, well with roasted chicken. Drinking this wine on the first day was a little bit too much for me, but what I found that this wine needs is to be aerated out. It needs to be decanted or it drinks well about the third or fourth day. Now, if you're interested in purchasing this, this Pinot Noir, you can purchase it at your local grocery store. That's where I got mine from. Or you can purchase it at any of your specialty wine stores. So you guys are probably wondering what happened to my car and I'm going to let you know. So I got my first car when I was 16. I believe I purchased it in October of 2000. School was in, I had saved up a thousand dollars, took that thousand dollars and bought my first car. So my first car was a 1987 Cutlass Cialis. I'm pretty sure that when I bought the car it was a lemon. but it kind of didn't matter because I had uncles and if you slipped them like $20, $30, they would fix my car for me. So that wasn't a big deal. As long as the car got me from point A to B, which it did, really wasn't a problem with me. So the car had a red exterior, a pink interior, and of course I decked it out. Around this time, everybody decked their cars out. So. I had my little pink furry around the, the steering wheel, my little seat covers, the decorated floor mats. Oh my God, my car was pimped out. This car was our car. When I say our car, I had my cousins and then my girlfriend that we would always ride around in this car. So it was me, my best friend Keisha, my cousin Jewel, her cousin Tamara, and then her cousin Marquita. We were like the dream team. We'd go out every weekend. We would literally drive this car around everywhere. Go to the mall, go out to dinner, go out to the nightclubs. Like, this was our car. 
my cousin, myself, and my best friend Keisha, we were we all worked at a place called Pragmatic. So I initially worked at pra Pragmatic, and then I got my friend Keisha and my cousin Jewel hired. So during summer of 2001, we all worked at Pragmatic. Now, Pragmatic was a market research company, and basically our job was to call their customers in their database, screen them for these focus groups, see if they qualify, their clients would then come in, test out products, and they would get paid for their time. So I think that the focus groups would last like one or two hours. Anyway, you would come in and give your opinion, and then you would get paid 50 to you know $150, however much the company that hired us to scout these people would pay them to come in for their time. We got paid every two weeks from Pragmatic, and on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we would we would be at Club Liquid faithfully, faithfully. Club Liquid was the only club in the city that would allow anyone 17 and older to get in. So as soon as we turned 17, we were just like, we're gonna go to Club Liquid. Like we're gonna be there every weekend. And as soon as we turned 17, Club Liquid was our spot. Now, I was 17 at the time, Keisha was 17, my cousin Jewel was 17, Marquita was 17 going on 18, and Tamara was actually 13, but Tamara was very mature for her age. Tamara probably had the best body out of all of us. She had a nice butt, a small waist, nice chest, I mean, she looked like she was our age, and so, you know, we would just sneak her in. Keisha, myself, and my cousin Jewel, we really didn't have a body. I mean, we had like something here and there. Like I was pretty big on the top. I always had a big top section. Keisha always had a curve, but she was more on the smaller side. And then my cousin Jewel, she was petite. Now Marquita, on the other hand, had a huge, huge backside. So all the guys would love to look at her. So Marquita was really thick. Anyhow, we would be there from the time it opened to the time it ended. I was always the designated driver, so I never smoke or drink, but every weekend Marquita, Jewel, and Tamara, they would turn up. Keisha didn't drink either. She didn't smoke or drink, so she was she me and Keisha, we were like good girls compared to them, but we we would turn up once we got inside of the club. We went there so much to where we had a group of guys that were like the male versions of us that we would just meet up with every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and we would literally have fun. Anyhow, this particular weekend, it was a Friday night, we had all just gotten paid, we had gone to the mall, we had went shopping, we had gotten our hair done, and for some reason, we left everything inside of the car. Um, I don't know if we were running late, if it was because, you know, uh, we were running behind as far as our hair appointments or whatever, but for whatever reason, this particular night, we had left all of our new clothes, everything inside of the car. Anyhow, it was probably around nine or 10 o'clock we were getting ready to go to Club Liquid. This particular night, it was a bikini competition, and we had all decided we were gonna enter the competition. Now, every time we would leave, my grandmother would ask us to come into our room just to check to make sure what we were wearing. Now, I remember trying to be funny and raise up my shirt and tell my granny that, oh, this is what I was wearing, and she went off on me in front of everybody. Everybody was laughing, like, this is what you get, and she told me, you know, if you go out to the club wearing that, you know, she was gonna put my foot somewhere. Use your imagination. So um, I ended up assuring her I was not wearing that. It's not gonna do anything that wouldn't make her proud. So we ended up leaving. When we get to the club, I don't know if you guys do this, but you know, we don't wanna take purses, that we don't wanna take cell phones. We don't wanna take anything. We wanna take enough little money so we can get a drink and we can keep it pushing. So everything that we had made for the previous two weeks, our paychecks, our new clothes, our cell phones, our purses and everything, we ended up leaving them inside of the car. I mean, I remember the car being so full, you could look through the window and you could see clothes, like tags and receipts, new shoes and 
checks and everything just thrown inside of the car. It was just so much stuff in the side, inside of the car and you could see it. We would park in our favorite spot, the spot that I always parked in front of, which was right in front of this fire hydrant. Now in St. Louis, the police officers never ticketed. I mean, they had bigger problems to worry about. You could park your car on the church steps and you would not get a ticket. So I parked my car in front of this fire hydrant every time we'd go to Club Liquid. I would park my car there, we would go inside, we would do our business, leave out, drive off. Never had any tickets. So this night we ended up going to the club and I, I guess it's important to let you know that this night Marquita was wearing one of my jumpsuits and because I was way smaller than her, the jumpsuit fit her like a glove, like it was extremely tight on her. Before we go into the club, we decide that we were not gonna enter the bikini competition. When we got to the club, we just decided we weren't gonna go in our bikinis. I remember I took off my shirt, Keisha took off her shirt, my cousin took off her shirt. The only one I believe went inside with her bikini on was Tamara. And then Marquita, she ended up opting to keep the jumpsuit on. So we ended up going inside. I actually had on a skirt. Keisha had on a pair of shorts. My cousin had on a pair of shorts, Tamara had on her swimsuit, and Marquita had on the jumpsuit. So we go inside, we meet up with our guy friends, we're talking, the bikini competition starts, nobody enter it, and so, you know, we're just going about our night like regular. I remember at one point of time during the night, Marquita was dancing so hard on top of a speaker that I just remember the, the jumpsuit splitting open between her legs and her just like saying, you know what, just screw it. And ripping the jumpsuit off like she was Hulk Hogan and just twirling around her head like she was Petey Pablo or something. I remember we were laughing so hard because we were just like, this girl is just crazy. We couldn't believe it. She just tore the jumpsuit off and was just like, forget it. I'm just gonna walk around in my swimsuit. Fast forward, club ends up letting out. We're walking back to our car. We're with our guys. They're like, we're gonna walk y'all back to your car. So we get to the point where I had parked the car. And uh, the guys were like, where's your car at? You say you parked your car right here. And we like, I look at Keisha and I'm like, no me and Keisha are not drunk. So where's the car at? Like Keisha, didn't I park the car here? She was like, yeah, you parked the car there. And I'm thinking in my head, where else could I have parked the car? Maybe I parked the car somewhere else and I didn't remember. So we ended up walking around the whole block, couldn't find the car, so I'm like, did it finally get towed? Did it get ticketed? We were just like, we don't know. I'm like, did some, did somebody, do you have your cell phone, Keisha? No. Jewel, do you have your cell phone? No. Everybody left the cell phone inside the car, so luckily we were with these guys, so they're like, here, you can use our phone. We end up calling the city. Did you guys tow a car? Did the car get removed? The city says, no, we don't have this car in our system. You know, maybe someone stole it. The dispatcher says to us, you know, just walk around the block, see if you can find the car. If you can't find it, call us back, we'll file a police report, and you can report your car stolen. So I'm freaking out at this time. Like now I'm in tears, I'm crying. Cause number one, my car is stolen. Number two, we don't have on any clothes. We're in these bikinis that we didn't lie to our grandmother and told her that we would not be wearing. So not only did my car get stolen, but we're in trouble if my grandmother comes and picks us up and we're in these bikinis. But we're walking around the block, walking around the block. I'm like, I can't believe this. I'm hysterical, I'm in tears. I'm freaking out. We come to the conclusion, the car is gone. Somebody stole the car. And they took our paychecks. They took all of our new clothes. They took our cell phones. Mind you, in 2001, not everybody had cell phones. You had a cell phone if you had a job, if you had a rich mommy and daddy, or if you stole one. And um, in this case, we didn't have a cell phone anymore. So I call my grandmother, I tell her the situation. She's like, okay, I'm on my way. It's three o'clock in the morning. My grandmother pull up. She pull up in the Bonneville, the green Bonneville. 
And I remember before she pulled up, I'm talking to the guys, like we are gonna get, be in trouble. Everybody's freaking out. So the guys, they give us their shirts. And so they're like, you can wear these shirts so your grandmother won't suspect anything. So my grandmother pulled up, my granny was smart. She pulled up, she looked at us, she's like, so where you at GD clothes at? And we're just like, we're, it was in our car. She was like, didn't I tell you all not to wear those damn bikinis? And I was so scared. I was, I mean, I was crying, I was in tears. We were so scared, even my friend Keisha. Keisha knew my granny was scary. She was like, oh my God, like she, she was so scared. She was like, she wasn't saying anything. Tamara wasn't saying anything. Marquita wasn't saying anything. Then my grandmother looked at us and she's like, get you, send the car. The next day was the saddest day. I remember it was raining. It was so sad because we couldn't go anywhere. Keisha had to stay at my house. I just remember going and talking to my grandmother and asking her, if they don't find the car, do you think you can help me get another car? Because I have $500 and I know my boss has a car that he's selling for 1500 so do you think you can loan me the thousand and then I will pay it back to you once we get paid. I remember her looking at me and saying, yeah, I'll help you out. I'll help you to get a car because I think she knew how hard I worked or how hard and how responsible I was. So she was like, if they don't find the car in the next couple of days, then we can go and get that other car. At that time, I started praying, I hope they don't find the car, I hope they don't find the car. My grandmother kept that promise. My grandmother ended up giving me 500. She told me no, she wouldn't give me the thousand. And then I remember I went and talked to my boss and I told him, you know, I really want this car. I can give you a thousand right now. And then he ended up taking the rest of the money out of my checks. The new car that I had bought was a 1992 Honda Accord and it had a sunroof, so oh my God. I had upgraded, it was like kind of bittersweet having this car stolen. It was bittersweet because on one hand, I didn't have a car for a couple of days and it was the saddest thing because every single day during the summer, my friends, my cousins and I, we were always up, out and doing things and then all of a sudden for a couple of days, we didn't have a car. So after I got my new car, I ended up getting a call from the police department saying that they had found my car. And it was on the east side of St. Louis. Now, if you know anything about St. Louis, you have St. Louis, Missouri, and then you have East St. Louis, Illinois, which is the bad part. Like, it's, it's the hood. You don't wanna go to the East St. Louis. Like, you know, whenever a car gets stolen, it always ends up on East St. Louis. So anyway, ended up finding my car, Police had towed the car to a tow yard, and then I think one of my timing belts broke, so that's what ended up like stopping them, but had that not happened, they probably would have been still driving with the car. When I went to pick up the car, of course, there was nothing left inside of the car. They had taken all the clothes, shoes, money, they took the paychecks, they took the cell phones, they took everything. I ended up bringing my uncle with me, he actually fixed the car while we were there in the junkyard. I drove it away and I ended up just selling that car to my cousin. At this point in time, I was just like kind of over it. I had already purchased a new car. I felt like when they had stole the car, they kind of stole a little piece of my heart, it kind of violated me. And so that, that car had given me so much trouble, yet it had given me so much pleasure that it was kind of like a bittersweet moment to get rid of that car. So I was I was really happy to sell it and then start my journey with the new cars. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you found it entertaining, funny, interesting, please give me a little thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Also, while you're at it, if you are watching this video and you are not subscribed, I'm gonna show you what's going on with my eyes. This is what I'm doing for you. And so if you could do something for me and press that little subscribe button, I would really, really love it. And while you're at it, make sure that you press that little alert bell so that you can be alerted every time I bring out a video so you won't miss a video when I bring it out. 
I am on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, all on the keywords fashion, beauty, and wine. And in the spirit of Crystal T, I want to wish you all nothing but peace, love, fashion, beauty, and wine. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.